Well, my understanding is it's it's uh, uh, very commonplace. Uh, there's some seven there's some seven thousand municipalities in the state of Illinois, uh, and my understanding is that uh, uh, south of I-80, it is almost always the circumstance where uh, uh, the village prosecutor ha has more than one role. Um, north of I-80, it's it's still common, but it's not a hundred percent. Um, but in answer to your question, it is common. Thank you. Okay, Trustee Strait. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, when when, Co when Kevin Cunningham was appointed as prosecutor and as adjudicator, uh, the Illinois State uh, Bar Association said that such an appointment was in violation of the state's ethics rules. And uh, uh, this, this board did ignore that opinion. And I, obviously you wrote the opinion. I know that uh, the village attorney uh, wrote an opinion saying that the Bar Association was wrong. Um, I think it's, it's obvious that the Bar Association is, is correct and that the village is wrong. Um, I believe now that the, the manager indicated that uh, Kevin had been in contact with the licensing agency for five or six weeks. Is that not correct? Um, Mayor and board, the first knowledge that I had of this was n not this organization contacting the village. We had no prior knowledge and I had no knowledge at the time it appeared in a publication. As soon as that publication was made available to me, I started raising questions and at that time I made contact with the village prosecutor slash adjudicator for the city of Elmhurst, highly respected law firm, and I asked them if they had any knowledge of it and that's what they basically, what Mr. Duffy told you, is what they told me. That was their opinion as well. Having said that, I encouraged Mr. Cunningham to work with his professional association slash committee, as I certainly would with my professional association, and try to explain. He already has a binding agreement with the village, approved, and um, things are working out well. Unfortunately, there are other circumstances, emails, blogs, communications that Mr. Cunningham felt in the interest of his family and his profession that he best thought for him that he should step down and just do the prosecution. I honored that. I got the resignation letter. I gave it to you within 48 hours and I placed it <coughs> on the agenda. And, and that's, that's the, the history behind it, Dusty. Well, uh, yeah. it, would, would you care to respond first to the, I, the I would, trustees' you know, it's comments? A, it's important to note that the, the ISBA has no enforcement authority over these advisory opinions at all, and they are one of uh, uh, some 40 bar associations in the state of Illinois. The CBA used to issue advisory opinions on ethics. Some of the bar associations, associations have ethics hotlines. Nothing they say has the force of law in any way, shape, or form. These are ethics advisory opinions of a, a committee with the ISBA. They can be wrong, and this one is flat out wrong. It has no, it ha does not have the force of law. It could not be enforced against uh, Mr. Cunningham or any, any other attorney in the state of Illinois in this situation. And uh, Mr. Cunningham, because of the, the pressure and, and, and an overabundance of, uh, abundance of caution, chose to uh, act as cautiously as possible, but there was nothing that the village did wrong here. There would be nothing with the vi nothing wrong with the village going forward with this arrangement. Uh, is it, uh, Trustee Strait, continue. Uh, Mr. Duffy, would you say that it's typical then that you would ignore an Illinois State Bar Association ethical opinion? You know, the, the, the State Bar Association used to issue a lot more ethical uh, uh, opinions than they do now. Why this one came out when it did is a, is a bit of a mystery. Um, but uh, uh, you can see it came out in late uh, uh, 2013, and it was the seventh opinion. It's the 13-07, only seven opinions all year long. Um, it, they, it's, it's a committee set up to, to uh, pontificate about different things. The ABA has never come down with anything remotely close to this. The Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, in the 2012 term, commented about the history of, of uh, government prosecutors also having private law practices, including the likes of Abraham Lincoln and the first 
four attorney generals of the United States. So there, there, is, there is nothing, and, and there is no comment in, in the Supreme Court's opinion about the, the nature of, of this being a conflict whatsoever. It, it isn't a conflict. It, they, the, the opinion itself is poorly written and should be disregarded, quite frankly. Well, I guess then what I would just uh, add is, you know, you've known this for months, for sure. And you, you, you work for the firm that represents the village, correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, rather than just ignoring what's an ethical opinion, did you, uh, I guess, two things. Did you ever uh, work to try to change that uh, uh, opinion of theirs? And did you have any contact with the Attorney Registration and Disciplinary con uh, Commission about what they would do in the event <coughs> that somebody was brought up on charges? Well, I think you misunderstand the process because no one could be brought up on charges based on an ISBA opinion. The rules of professional conduct govern attorneys. The RDC is the enforcement arm of the, of, uh, for the rules of professional conduct. No one has ever enforced an ISBA guideline. There's, All right, there's, what if somebody it's impossible. filed a complaint? It's impossible. If somebody filed a complaint, would they not hear it then? They'd say they would disagree. Are you saying that they would the disregard way the, it? The way the uh, 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 ARDC works is people file complaints all the time. Every day they file complaints against attorneys. They, they make, uh, 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 most are spurious. 99% are spurious. It goes to, a, to a, a, uh, a prosecutor in the office, and the prosecutor decides whether to bring it to a, a, a board and the board makes a decision whether to charge it or not. 99% of the complaints that are brought by citizens, non-lawyers typically, litigants, are never charged. They never get to the charging basis. If this were brought to an ARDC prosecutor, in my opinion, there is no way it would result in charges of any kind. Thank you. Madam Mayor. I, I just want to. I, I just want to bring up again uh, the the comments that have been made by a trustee here is trying to undermine moving this village forward, and quite honestly, is causing this village to have spent taxpayer money going after issues that the trustee thinks are relevant, which aren't relevant, but forcing people into situations where they have to make uh, decisions to provide for their family versus, you know, stay the fight and keep going on with it. Uh, and I, I think it's just another pitiful example of somebody undermining our ability to govern. Any other discussion on just, this item? I just would like um, to say that I would. Uh, I think we should we should follow ethical guidelines when they come from the Illinois State Bar Association, and and re instead of thinking that we know better and can do whatever we want, because well, that certainly is the impression that well, that well again, I think that we the, get the impression the, you want. Uh, the uh, the uh, Illinois State Bar Association check. guidelines have no they're, they're no force of law and. Even if they did have a force, the force of law, they only apply to attorneys. The village is obviously not an attorney. The village has no stake in this game whatsoever. The so only, okay, only Kevin Carberry. could be, could be uh, affected by their actions. Madam Mayor, I, 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 I would um, like to add on to that. Uh, okay, Trustee Olenicek, then. Uh, the implied Trustee liability Carberry. based off of Trustee Streit's own comments is that <laughs> if we kept this going, then the people who were in adjudication and also being uh, hear, heard at the other hearings could have legal recourse against the village, us the taxpayers. That's what a sitting trustee is doing with our taxpayer money. That's the point because he feels, based off of his own interpretation of the law, or maybe uh, another. My interpretation, it's the Illinois State Bar Association. Uh, Trustee Carberry, you had a comment? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you very much for all your, uh, your information, but I just want to comment on Kevin Cunningham, who I, I have known Kevin a long time, and uh, um, his integrity and his reputation is excellent, and he's a uh, He's a wonderful guy. I'm, um, I wish he, um, I'm sorry he did have to resign, you know. Um, I am. And, 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 and the only thing I'm going to say to the, the people, if anyone is wasting their time and watching this, that, um, uh, you know, we got a lot of people in Oakland. Our main focus should be 
um, their housing values and, and what we're doing for them financially and and we get down these rat holes of junk and it's um, it gets a little uh, you get a little frustrated and you, it gets you to where you either want to work harder right you either work harder or you you give up and I don't think anyone's gonna there's no one here is gonna give up I'm not giving up and um, and um, people care and these people that work here care in Oakland there's no doubt in my mind there's people from everybody on this uh, you guys saw what in this budget presentation that's what we got to stay focused on um, this 111 Street Christ Hospital you know relationship those are the things we have to nurture and um, this is a we got a lot going on but if we stay if we stay the course on this junk ain't nothing gonna get done so we got to work together in this hit list business come on it's a uh, you've been going with that it's an old record Bob it don't it don't fly it doesn't um, I know these people now over a short short period of time I've gotten to know Terry uh, Vorder, Carol here, I don't think any, uh, Olin Echek and, and, and Desmond, there's no one following anybody here. Now, if someone with eight years experience, I don't care if it's a state representative or a senator or um, uh, an ex-trustee of Oak Lawn, if they're going to help us, if someone has a piece of advice, by all means, if it's going to help Oak Lawn, even you, <laughs> I'll take it. But it's got to be something about making Oakland better, because if it's about pick, putting us back, Bob, yeah. you just aren't. That, it, it's not working, and you're not. It's not going to sell, because people know. Right? right now, let me finish. Just let me finish. Just let me finish. Just let me finish. And you can go on and and you can try to sell the hit list and all the other stuff, and you can try to convince my people that I'm a follower. That ain't going to work. <laughs> the people that know me know I don't follow. So, but I listen. I listen. When things make sense, and even if you come up with something that makes sense, I'll listen. Okay. But you're not making sense. Well, you know what? So we're going to call the vote. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? No. Motion passes 5-1. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Board. I have no other items. Okay, well, we're almost through the first page of this agenda. <laughs> we're moving on to item 11. This is ordinance 140207. This is an ordinance amending certain provisions of title six and seven of the village code. These are building related codes. We have a motion please on item 11. Um, I would actually motion to postpone this Okay, we have a motion to postpone Second. and uh, properly moved by Trustee Desmond, seconded by Trustee Vorderer. Uh, please take the vote. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorderer? Yes. Trustee Strike? Yes. Motion passes. Item 12 on page 2, ordinance 140208. This is an ordinance authorizing the establishment of uh, tax increment financing, interested parties, registries, and adopting registration rules for such registries. May I have a motion, please, on item 12. Uh, move to Mayor, if I, I could, just um, as an introduction on these items, the next three that you have are <coughs> basically setting in motion what Trustee Strite was asking about for the Stony Creek Promenade and that um, Cicero and 111th uh, TIF. And it all begins um, Monday night when we give a public PowerPoint presentation in a public meeting here in this room with our planning and zoning board. And then hopefully um, following uh, the guidelines and suggestions of Trustee Carberry where we can meet as a group and spend a good workshop on the whole issue of the TIF and what we're trying to do at that uh, corner. The first item, registry, the law sets up anyone in this room, anyone watching on television, any citizens, you want to get notices as to all the meetings and documents that are being printed, just come and sign up, okay, and we'll provide those to you on the clerk's office. 
Number two is to set the date, um, which is in March for the hearing, so we have plenty of time to have a workshop. And then the uh, third one, again, just indicates it's called an inducement letter that we're informing Cook County we're doing this to induce developers, to induce private investment at that location, and that's a perfunctory requirement of the TIF statute. And again, for everybody knows, TIFs are in 48 of 50 states. They started in Minnesota, started here in the Midwest, very successful in Michigan, Illinois, uh, and Minnesota, um, but I've run into it in most states I've worked in. It's a tool, just one of many tools to try to encourage redevelopment in the community. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Trustee Desmond, I believe you were making a motion, I think, or asking a question? No, uh, that was no, before. No, you weren't. Okay, so I need a motion, please, on item uh, 12. 12, please. Motion approved. Properly moved by Trustee Olenichik. Second. Seconded by Trustee Desmond. Any discussion on item 12? Please take the vote. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Garberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Thank you. Passes. Okay, item 13, Ordinance 140209. This is an ordinance of the Village of Oak Lawn, Cook County, Illinois, to set a date for and to approve a public notice of public hearing for the Cicero Gateway Redevelopment Project. May I have a motion on motion 13. To approve. Properly moved by Trustee Vorder. Second. Seconded by Trustee Olenichik. Uh, any discussion on item 13? Please take the vote. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Okay. We're moving on to item 14, resolution 140205. This is a resolution of the Village of Oak Lawn, Cook County, Illinois, setting forth and expressing an official intent regarding certain expenditures to pay redevelopment project costs in connection with the redevelopment of the proposed Cicero Gateway project area to be reimbursed from the Cicero Gateway Special Tax Allocation Fund. Need a motion on 14, please. Motion to approve. Properly moved by Trustee Vorderer. Second. Seconded by Trustee Desmond. Any discussion on this item? Please take the vote. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, item 15 on our agenda tonight is a discussion on Committee of the Whole. I'm going to turn the floor over to Trustee Cardberry on this to lead it off. You know, and if we want to uh, postpone it, we can. I don't want to, you know, the, the meeting going away. So next, moved. Second. <laughs> No, I, I think this is important. I think, Mike, we it need it to hear is, what you have to say. It, it's 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 going to be a discussion. It's going to we want to go well, through. Let's it at least start the discussion, maybe, and uh, at least tell people what it's about, and then we could revisit yeah, it, next it, time. It, it's it's an effort to get all of us, all of us together, to uh, with staff and as a workshop, like Larry described it, and um, so we we all clearly vet and know what's going on in the next agenda. Um, so there's nothing um, there's nothing coming up that's going to be um, that anyone's going to be surprised with, and it's just another it's another way for all of us to communicate and um, and to share information and ideas with staff and us. So that's pretty much what it is. It's, it'd it's, be an extra it might, informal it, meeting. In the way it's been described to me, it does seem like you know like, like everyone might be thinking it's more work, or but we already do a lot of other work, you know, one on one with. Uh, you know, someone in the public works, or you're getting involved anyway. And then we, if we do it all together, we all get the information, get everyone together, and eventually it becomes efficient. And um, you actually, I think you're going to save time and hopefully make better decisions. Excellent. With more communication. So that's all I got. Okay, Trustee Border. Yeah, uh, Trustee Carberry, excellent idea. Communication is the key to solving a lot of our problems. If we share our thoughts and ideas in a, a meeting format, I think that would be great. Uh, I look forward to more discussion on the concept. Okay. Uh, I, 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 did talk, I did talk to Trustee Carberry. There are, there are a couple of things that when we go to like PD&C or the, uh, uh, the public works 
uh, going over uh, the, the big plan for the public works. We'll have to talk about some rules of engagement and what we want to do because there are things that we do in, in the different committees, whether it's the IT committee, uh, which is you know, key in getting the draft on the whole uh, internet and website uh, rebuilt and up to date. Um, that uh, if other trustees want to go through that, that's perfectly fine. But I will tell you that average public works meeting is about an hour to an hour and a half, and that's just one meeting that you're going through. So I do agree with meeting prior to a meeting to go over and, and handle a true executive session the way it is, uh, and, and hopefully we get rid of some of these hidden agendas and work towards the common good of the people. I think that that's a great thing to do. Um, but we still have a lot of other work in the committees uh, that, that are out there that you, we really don't soft sell the different committees that we're involved with and the amount of time that we have to go with it. I think a recap from the different committee men in that type of meeting I think would be an excellent way of doing it. And I, I agree that you know, working with this new board has been excellent because of the, the open and honest communication and not having hidden agendas. So I commend you for bringing this forward. Um, you had said that you wanted to meet prior to a meeting, so are you talking like a half hour before uh, a meeting? You know what, I, I talked with um, our attorney, Pat Connolly, you know, about this, and uh, he's, um, he's familiar with other municipalities that do it, and I'm going to talk to another municipality that does it. Everyone, some people have a little different flavor, so I'll try to get something in writing that we all can, we all can review and look at, and then if uh, I'll send it out to everybody, and Whatever feedback we get, we'll juggle it around and see if we can come up with something. Great. That works uh, for everybody. We'll help you draft a memo on it. Get it over to you. All right. Thanks. That'd be great. Thanks. Trustee Desmond, were you going to say something? Yeah. Um, thank you. I think it's a great idea, Mike. Um, you know, we're here at 10 o'clock, you know, discussing and talking back and forth about these items on the agenda. Maybe if we had an agenda meeting before the regular meeting, open to the public, if we have questions, we can ask various different departments. Uh, Chicago Ridge, I believe, have an agenda meeting before their regular meeting. Their regular meetings, they go through the agenda. It's a straight vote. Any, um, if there's any disagreements, if they want something tabled, they discuss it at the agenda meeting. I think it might cut back on a lot of the political posturing, especially coming up to elections. Um, so I would be for your suggestion, Mike. So the way I'm going to proceed is I'd like a motion to postpone this till the next meeting, and at that time we'll have a more formal so moved. kind of document. Properly moved by Trustee Olenicek. Second. Seconded by Trustee Carberry. Just uh, one comment, Mayor. Uh -huh. um, you know, I'm certainly familiar with how other, uh, many other villages conduct their meetings, and oftentimes uh, the uh, committee meeting, the committee of the whole, uh, first of all, those meetings are often... Um, they're not televised, um, and, and those are, uh, they can be the, the, the working uh, meeting of the village, and then the regular board meeting, which in our case is televised, are often, uh, you know, very quick meetings where there's no discussion. So as long as this is not an attempt to really keep from the public what's going on here, you know, I'm certainly open to discussing. All of these meetings would be uh, open I, I to would, the public. And televised as well? Uh, it would not be televised. It would not it be would televised. Be a now that, I think that's, that would concern me because it does then certainly would give me the impression that we may not want the public to know what we're talking about. Well, it would be open so to the public. Uh, open, yeah, so open and public is, you know, so open and televised are two different things. We we can can on this. Madam Mayor, let me, let me just give an example of, of, of <laughs> what we did on the budget. We had meetings with the budget. This board worked very, very hard on a very difficult budget. It was an open meeting, but it wasn't televised. And then we came into uh, the regular board meeting and we reported the results of our work. I Madam, think that that as a committee of whole worked very, very well. But you, you have to look at how people react and what information they take out of it. Nobody's trying to hide anything. And, you know, I, I mean, you as a trustee have sat on this board and you've only been in the televised meetings for what, six years that we've been doing it? The preceding 22 years, they weren't televised. So, you know, the, this whole thing that the, because it's not televised, we're trying to hide anything. I, I don't think... I think we can come up with something to overcome that <coughs> objection. I, I, you know, it's going to be... We can discuss that in the committee. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're okay, going to have... So <laughs> we're so going to have staff. Well, there's going to be staff there, Bob. I mean, we're not looking to put the... Um, 
you know, staff on, on the spot, and uh, this is going to, but it's going to be open to the public. So I'll talk to the other uh, 